Let me read to you a passage from the seventh chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 14 to 23. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the fifth week in ordinary time. St. Mark writes, Again Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked? Do you not see that nothing that enters a man from outside can make him unclean? For it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then passes on. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. That's from Mark chapter 7 verses 14 to 23. It speaks of what comes out of the human heart. What do I mean? Well, imagine this. Our scene is Palestine, and it is a little over 2,000 years ago. A child is born to a Jewish family in Galilee, a family observant of the law of God. The child is given the name Simeon, or Simon. His brother is Andrew. They grow in their childhood into adolescence and then as vigorous and devout young men. They absorb the great hope of Israel for the coming Messiah and make it their own. Their business is with fishing on the Lake of Galilee and they are competent and successful in their work. Simon marries, but perhaps, for we do not know one way or the other, perhaps his young wife dies. That he married is clear because we read of his mother-in-law, but we read nothing at all of his wife. He is a good man, as is his brother, and news comes to Galilee that there is a prophet in Judea, John, and numbers are going to him to be baptised in the River Jordan as a grace-filled expression of repentance. There is talk of the coming of God in some, in some way, indeed of the Messiah. We know the grand sequel. It was there that Simon and his brother Andrew Andrew first, and then Simon, met the Messiah and became his friends and disciples. They are called to be of the twelve, with Simon being and being called the rock. Their goodness flowers, and despite their faults, they go on to holiness of life, spending their lives in the greatest cause of all, spreading Christ's church and bringing others into union with Jesus, the Messiah and Son of God. They end their days as martyrs for the name of Jesus and now reign with Christ in heaven. Out of their hearts could have come a trail of mediocrity, but with the aid of the grace of God and their own good resolution, from their obscure and ordinary beginnings came untold good. At the same time, all those years, while they were growing up, so was another good young man, Judas Iscariot. He too meets Jesus and, so great is his promise and so special the choice of God, that he is called not only to be a disciple, but one of the very twelve. But how sad and tragic is the sequel. From the heart of Judas came betrayal, tragedy, despair, and a total moral catastrophe. From the heart of each, on the one hand Judas, and on the other Simon, came very different things. It is the drama of every soul. 
Imagine a child is born and the birth gives great joy to his parents. He is a healthy baby and his entry into the course of life floods the heart of his parents with happiness. He is taken to the church and is baptised into Christ and the life of God floods the soul of the infant. What awesome prospects lie ahead. From his heart, renewed wonderfully by grace, but wounded by original sin and personal sin, can come very opposite things. He could be a saint. And numbers upon numbers become saints, some known and recognised by decree of the Church, many more known only to God in heaven. They are the heroes of human history, and out of their hearts have come untold good. Others, though, oh how sad is their course. Adolf Hitler was a baptised and confirmed Catholic. He had been given the grace of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual means of growing in holiness. But how colossal was the moral tragedy of his life. Out of his heart flowed not great good but incalculable harm. Such is the drama of the human being. A man's heart can become very good or it can become very bad. It can grow in goodness, it can be but mediocre or it can descend into moral corruption. In our Gospel today from Mark chapter 7 verses 14 to 23, our Lord sets aside all thought that it is basically what enters a man from outside that makes him unclean. That is to say, he is responsible for himself, for it is from him, from his own heart, that the true evil of the world flows. So it was in the beginning. Man was constituted as good, but he decided to follow a path that was evil. Out of his heart, made good by God and his creation, came evil, and this because of his own personal decision to sin. Thus sin entered the world, and with sin came death, and death has spread to the whole human race. This is the fallen condition into which every man is born, and it is compounded by his own decision to sin. As our Lord said, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Mark chapter 7 verses 14 to 23. Let us understand the situation before us then. We must make a choice every day. Because of the work of Christ and our own baptism, which brings that work to our souls, we have the spiritual wherewithal to combat our own hearts and to make it possible for grace to change it. Out of our hearts can come good or evil. Let us make sure that our hearts are transformed into the likeness of Christ, so that what poured out of his heart for the benefit of mankind will be replicated in some small measure in us. Let us so strive as to become like Christ.